Welcome to the Brainy 8 Show, where we talk about all things Salesforce, sharing the coolest features, solutions, and best practices to turn you into a Salesforce rock star. Here's your host, former attorney turned Salesforce consultant and trainer, David Giller. Hello and welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining me today. And we are going to be talking about how to put your best foot forward as it relates to working remotely and trying to improve your appearance as much as you can, specifically related to lighting and audio sound. Now, look, for the last year plus, all of us have been in this twilight zone of sorts where we found ourselves, even if we were working from home before, we found ourselves now working from home more long term more consistently and a lot of times with other family members around and we're not necessarily set up with the most ideal lighting sound camera everything in order to be doing any of that over the last year i have immersed myself in trying to do the best that i can like many of us have while working remotely in order to improve the video quality, improve the audio quality, improve my own ability to concentrate, make eye contact with the camera when talking to people in Zoom, et cetera. And basically I've whittled down the best practices that I could identify specifically as it relates to lighting and sound when working remote. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you now. By the way, this is actually part of a series. It's actually the first part in a series. I plan on putting out videos covering all of these different topics that you see over here on the side. Because when it comes down to it, there's actually a whole lot that goes into trying to work remotely, especially. For us as Salesforce admins, a lot of times working remotely is way more than just showing up and paying attention during a meeting. We're gathering business requirements. We are trying to do training for end users. We want to make sure that we can try to leverage the recording of anything that we're doing so that it could be used again in the future. There's a lot that you can do that you don't necessarily have to do in order to make it better and to work more productively and come across as being more professional. So this is really the first in a series, as you can see right here. I recently got approved on Amazon to be uh, what they call an Amazon influencer. And Amazon apparently has this functionality where you can actually go live on Amazon. This is my first time trying to go live on Amazon. And I did some practicing beforehand to make sure from the technology perspective, all was good. But because I put a comment on the live stream saying, by the way, I'm also multi-streaming on YouTube and on Facebook, they ended and Facebook ended my live stream. Okay, whatever. As we're talking about different products that I use, that I have intimate familiarity with and I plan on speaking to, I will be sharing with you affiliate links, which means that if you do click on the link and you do complete a purchase, I am an Amazon affiliate, which means at no cost to you, I will earn a tiny commission based on anything that is purchased. You are under no obligation to purchase anything whatsoever. I am more interested in sharing with you the tips and the advice and the best practices that I want to cover. But next up, let's talk about audio. So as it relates to looking your best and sounding your best, First, we need to really just focus on audio. Why is it that we need to focus more on audio? Because as much as image quality matters, and yes, visualization is a huge component in like body language, nonverbal communication is a huge component in communication, but people remember the audio tremendously. And guess what? If you come in crystal clear in HD and everything is well lit, and if they can't hear you, or if your voice sounds garbled, or if there are echoes, or if there's a lot of background noise, lawnmower, dog barking, baby crying, radio, nobody's gonna hear you, it's gonna be very distracting. So let's focus a little bit on audio. So first, let's talk about headphones. Why is it so important to focus on headphones? And by the way, some of you might be wondering, David, you don't seem to be wearing headphones right now. 
I'm going to get to that. Don't worry. The primary reason why it's so important to consider some kind of headphone is because, and we've all been there before, where there's a feedback loop coming out of your computer, where your own voice or somebody else's voice is coming out of your computer, and then your microphone is picking it up, thinking that it's your voice, and then feeding it back into the remote meeting that you're in. That can be insanely distracting to everyone in the meeting. If you use headphones, you are eliminating, you're totally stopping that feedback loop. So it is really important to consider headphones. And I'm going to show you some insanely inexpensive. You probably even have some of these already at home, so you don't even have to buy anything. We're also going to be talking about microphones. And a lot of these headphone solutions also include microphones. And... Similarly, there are some incredibly inexpensive microphone options that you probably already have too. All right, so the first one is the most simplistic wired earbuds of any kind. It doesn't really matter what brand, but you need to make sure that the earbuds also include a microphone. Why am I saying it's important to have the earbuds also include a microphone? If you are using the native built-in microphone that your computer has, let's say you're working with a laptop, do you know where that microphone is? Sometimes that microphone is in the hinge of your laptop, like where the fan is and it starts making noise, that is as it starts heating up, or sometimes it's on the edge on one of the sides or in the back. But either way, your mouth, the source of the audio is not close enough to the microphone that it should pick it up with enough good quality sound. So by having a headphone with a microphone built in, even if it's in the wire, even if it's less than $10 of an earbud with a microphone, you're going to have a better quality of the microphone as well as solving the headphone issue at the same time. So the first option is the most simplistic. And by the way, let me, I'm going to put this in the chat right now. I'm going to put a hyperlink to where you can see all of these products easily. So this is the first option. The next one is wireless earbuds. For those of you who have AirPods, go ahead and use them. If you don't have AirPods, there are some insanely inexpensive options. Now, by the way, I have both my AirPods as well as a backup of these. Now, when I say backup, actually both of them are backups. I do not find the comfort level of the AirPods to be sustainable, to be sitting in back-to-back -back meetings each one hour long throughout the course of the day, wearing the AirPods. Personally, I just don't find it comfortable. I would much rather have the wireless earbuds that you see like right there, right above my head. That's what this is. And I keep them right next to me so that in case I need them, I just pop it into my ear. And by the way, those kind of earbuds that sit inside your ear, it's flush with your head. So it does not look like you're wearing earrings. That's what I prefer. And it's, in my mind, it's way more comfortable than the AirPod solution. Next, as it relates to a microphone, you might have the, the most simplistic headphones that you happen to have around the house and you're just using them and they don't have a microphone. You might also want to consider just getting a lapel microphone. Now I'm going to show you, this is the one that you see here is the exact one that I have. And this is for me a backup microphone. I'm going to show you soon what I'm using right now in case you don't see it. So this lapel microphone, this one also comes with 16 feet of wire, which means if for some reason I need to reach back behind me during a meeting to open the window, to close the window, to turn off the light in the room. I can actually get up and walk around, even though I'll be off camera momentarily, they will still be able to hear me. And if I'm wearing like wireless earbuds, I will still be able to hear everyone in the meeting. And this produces really good quality. And by the way, 
these typically come with several adapters for the different kinds of devices, the different uh, kinds of either laptops or desktops that you might be using. Uh, you can also use a lightning adapter in case you want to use it with your phone. So that is a really good option, super affordable. Next up, this is actually what I'm using. I happen to have a much older version of this microphone. And by the way, when I got this microphone, it was not even for remote working. My goal was not for using it during uh, meetings of any kind, during any Zoom meetings or anything. I bought this to create training videos and for podcasting. And this is considered the low end, the, the most budget friendly version of a really good quality professional microphone. And it, what I find actually funny about it is a lot of times I'm in a Zoom meeting and it's visible. So like it's right here immediately beneath, you probably don't see it because also I'm wearing black, but this is the one that I have. And uh, a lot of times when I'm in a Zoom meeting and someone looks at me and like the first thing that really catches their eye is like the tip, that head of the microphone. And people make a comment like, oh, you got a professional uh, DJ microphone. I'm not looking to impress anyone with the physical presence of the microphone in the meeting at all. I just want it to come across as really good quality. And one of the other things to consider about one of the other major benefits of using a microphone like this is it has settings on it where you can control from which direction it should pick up the sound. So I absolutely love this microphone since I already have it. I That's the only microphone I use when I'm doing anything really with my computer. So I highly recommend this microphone. All right, now that we've talked about being able to hear other people in the meeting and that they should be able to hear you, let's talk about the other distracting noises that might be within your environment that those other meeting participants that you're meeting with, they are getting distracted by those sounds. And you might, may or may not like the way it comes across when it could be kids fighting, it could be the dog barking, it could be the baby crying, or a neighbor living upstairs or downstairs playing loud music, and people can hear it in your meetings. So that's what we're going to talk about. So really the first thing that you need to do is identify the source of the sounds, depending on where it's coming from or who it's coming from. You may or may not be able to control it. If it's neighbors, you simply can't control it. If it's your own kids who are doing school remotely in the room next door, or your significant other who's also working from home, okay, then maybe A, you can negotiate a little bit in terms of space if you do have the space available where, hey, I'll take this space as my working space, and you take that space as your working space. And then one of some of the other things I'm going to show you soon are different things that you can do in order to reduce those distracting sounds. Now, by the way, ironic, ironically, even the icons that you see right here, I've got all of them. I've got the dog. I've got my granddaughter who, for the past year, my married daughter, my son-in-law, and my granddaughter have been living more with us than in their own apartment. And of course, there's always someone either putting on music or using the blender or doing something else within the house. So I am intimately familiar with the kind of pain that gets introduced by having all of this. So the first thing, believe it or not, don't be shocked by this. This is actually an insanely inexpensive and flexible solution. You probably already know, so I don't mean to state the obvious, but you probably already know that fabric will dampen the sounds. So if you're in a room that let's say has carpeting and some other fabric, let's say upholstered furniture, you're going to have less echoes. You're going to be a little bit more soundproof than a room that has a wooden floor or a tile floor with no upholstered, no fabric, no anything around. Believe it or not, a lot of podcasters, a lot of live streamers use moving blankets because they are incredibly large and super inexpensive and insanely effective at minimizing sound. 
So depending on where the sound is coming from, if for example, maybe it's from the people who live downstairs, or maybe it's from the people in the next, the adjoining room, you can go ahead and either bunch up the moving blankets on the floor around you or hang them, figure out a way to hang them, maybe with clamps, maybe with hooks on the wall or over the door or whatever it, maybe it's just even over existing furniture to help dampen the sounds around you. And that is a very inexpensive way to have a huge impact. I happen to be working right now in my son's room. My 23 year old son moved out a couple of years ago and uh, I hijacked his room to turn it into my office. So right opposite me, like where I'm pointing is what used to be his closet. All I have to do is open the doors to the closet and there's clothing hanging in there. So that helps dampen the sound so that I am not disturbing other people in the home and other people's sounds are not disturbing me as much. So this is really effective. Next up, door stoppers. This is also super inexpensive. All you have to do is slide it under the door and basically it puts these like foam piping on each side of the door so that this way there's no sound or minimal sound coming in from under the door. Very effective. If you really want to kick it up a notch or if neither of those solutions really work for you based on your working layout, then you should consider panels like these. Now, by the way, you do not have to like wallpaper your room with these panels. You could just start off with a few of them and most of them come with double face tape, adhesive tape on the back, where you could just tape them to different portions on your wall. If you want, you could even make like a checkerboard pattern. So it's interspersed. They don't, you don't even necessarily need to have them consistent. And that will help minimize sound from adjoining rooms. This is also incredibly helpful. Another example of using this is let's say you are living in uh, an apartment or a condo and it's the neighbors upstairs who are making the sound put some of these on the ceiling and that will help dramatically now this is the reason why you do not see me most of the time you do not see me wearing headphones even when i'm in like zoom meetings where there's other sound coming in like right now it's only my voice, my audio that's going in through the live stream. But even if we were in a Zoom meeting where there's sound coming out of the computer also from the other participants, I typically am not wearing a headset because I am using this tool. I cannot say enough amazing things about this tool. It's called Crisp. The website is crisp.ai. I don't remember off the top of my head how much uh, they charge. I do remember it is insanely inexpensive. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to give you, hang on one second, I'm going to put a link in uh, the chat for a YouTube video where, no, I'm not expecting you to watch it now, but just at least save it as a bookmark, where someone goes ahead and gives a demo of what it looks by all means. Go ahead and start a free trial and see what it's like. But basically the link that I just put for a YouTube video is basically where this one guy takes his daughter, his toddler, put her on his lap and he tests out, he records it as he flicks crisp on and off. So he's got music playing on his phone and he's tickling his daughter and he's speaking at the same time. And then he turns this on and off and crisp somehow knows what sounds should be coming through on your microphone and filters out everything else. I have no idea how they came up with this. I did not believe that this would like actually work, but I tried it. I completely love it. And I use this for everything. So basically once you set this up on your computer, it essentially is then available as your source microphone in any application. So you could be in Google Hangouts, you could be in uh, Teams, you could be in Zoom, whatever you're doing. And when you go, you go to select the microphone, basically you select 
crisp. And it's within crisp is where you're saying that a crisp should really be looking at, let's say, this microphone, like the one that I have, or your headphone uh, microphone, or the lapel microphone, or even the built-in microphone. And crisp will basically do the rest. So this is incredibly helpful. It's a total game changer. And like I said, I love it. All right, next up, let's talk a little bit about, about lighting. And the first thing that I'm going to say is, hey, natural lighting, it's free. Just use daylight. It's great. And it really does give the best lighting for you. You will look best if you can leverage natural daylight to your advantage. Let's talk about some of the tips that I can share with you about using natural daylight. So the first thing is we need to start paying close attention to positioning. If the window is in front of you and the sun is shining towards your direction, like on your face, that is the best situation. Usually, unless it's too harsh, and then I'm assuming like you'd put some kind of drapes or blind, adjust the blinds somehow. But this is the ideal positioning. However, if you're in this type of situation when the sun is on your side, then depending on the time of day, if it's actually showing on your face, then you're good to go. But if later during the day, the light is no longer on your face, but the light is only shining on the wall behind you, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be almost the same as if you are sitting in front of the window. In other words, the window is behind you. If the window is behind you and the sun is shining in, this is what you think the other attendees see in the meeting. But you know what they actually see? This is what they actually see in the meeting. They see nothing but a silhouette. And do you know what happens when you are speaking in a meeting and this is what they see? They are so distracted by the silhouette that they are not paying attention to the words of what you are saying. So my recommendation is don't sit with the window behind you and the sun coming in behind you unless you go ahead and you supplement with artificial lighting with other lighting fixtures in order to counterbalance that light coming from behind you. So let's talk about supplementary lighting. Now what you see over here, I was in the exact same room that I'm in right now. And basically I started recording videos and I was attending Zoom meetings while working from home. And then I realized while looking at the recording that one of two things happened. First of all, I thought something was totally wrong with my camera. Uh, and then I realized that the camera was trying to adjust for the quality of the video that was coming in and was either making me look like a zombie, like I was dead, or was overly saturating to try to compensate for the lack of color and was overly saturating the video where basically I look like I'm wearing makeup. And that was pretty awful. So I started doing a little bit of research. And what I discovered is, oh, my skin tone and the color of the wall behind me is almost exactly the same. And that's the problem. So basically, if I took a can of paint and painted the wall behind me any dark color, any color that is not similar to my skin tone, I'll be fine. But before I went ahead and invested in a can of paint, I'm not the most handy kind of person. When it comes to technology, I'm all in. But when it comes to doing things with hammers or saws or paintbrushes and cans of paint, I am a total klutz. So I decided before doing that, I was going to explore some options with lighting. What you see right now and what I'm using at this very moment, it is the exact same wall that's behind me. In, on the picture on the, that you see on the left, I was using the regular lighting that's in the room, which is hi-hats that's built into the ceiling. They are not on right now. Those are totally off. And it was just natural daylight and the wall behind me. That's it. I'm going to show you exactly what I am using in order to create the lighting effect 
that you see right now. Now, one of the reasons why you can't rely exclusively on natural lighting and you need supplementary lighting is because natural lighting is inconsistent based on the weather, based on the season, based on if you're going to have a meeting at 4 p.m. In, in the winter, well, guess what? It's going to be pretty dark. What are you relying on? So it's really important that basically no matter what, even if you think you have the best windows situation with the sunlight coming in all the time, you really need to consider supplementary lighting to help you out. All right, first thing, let's talk about lighting up the background. Now, the good thing is you really don't need to make yourself crazy about lighting up the background. All you really need to do is make sure that the background is not pitch dark. And you need to make sure that the background is not the same color as your skin tone. So any kind of minimal lighting that is dedicated to the background is going to do the trick. So you have lots of options here. I'm going to show you again exactly what I use, but you can feel free to use any lighting fixtures that you already have at home. It could be a floor lamp, it could be a desk lamp, it could be a night table lamp, anything at all, you can feel free to use and play around with the positioning of it. So I am not so far from the wall behind me. So you don't wanna make it necessarily too close to the wall behind you. So you don't necessarily wanna have it too bright. Play around with it until you feel that you have something that looks better than what you have today. So this is what I'm using. I started off just with the strip lights, the LED strip lights that you see on the right hand side. Actually, what I should say is before I used either of the products that you see here, I found on Amazon one box. I don't have it within arm's reach right now, otherwise I'd get it. One, it's basically a rectangular box and it's an LED light and with the dials, you can, and it also has a mobile app, you can go ahead and basically make it whatever color you want. This rectangular box, I then had to put on a tripod, in or a small little tripod, in order to angle it the right way so that it would be reflecting on not only the wall behind me, but from sitting on the floor, it would be angled to uh, be positioned facing upward. A couple of things happened. First of all, I had to have it at such an angle that it toppled over a lot. The other thing is sometimes I would roll my chair back and I would run over the light and the tripod. The other thing was I would sometimes finish meetings and forget that the light was on behind me and the light was on for far more hours than it really needed to be. One of the things that I realized is that I needed an easy way to just get all of my, what I call studio lights, the dedicated lights that I need for Zoom meetings, for creating recordings, for creating YouTube videos, easily turned on or off on a dime. And basically what I realized is I have an Amazon device where I can articulate a quick command and all of the lights that I want to go on will simply go on and all of the lights that I need to go off would simply go off. It would all just happen immediately. So I realized that I needed some options that were compatible with the Amazon device. So both of these options actually fit the bill. So the first, I started off with the strip light, the LED strip light that you see over here. And basically I have it on the floor going behind me. I actually also have a green screen. I am not using the green screen right now, but I have a green screen over here behind me. And it's basically, I'll describe it as a reverse window shade where it's coming from the bottom. So it's a long rectangular, sort of like a pole sitting on the floor. And essentially I pull it up and it stands up and basically pop it down. So why am I describing this to you? Because the LED light strips, basically I taped it to be around the perimeter of the entire case for the green screen, which means it is perfectly diagonal to be facing the wall behind me, diagonally facing upward a little bit. So I started off with that light and it actually worked really well, but I realized it was not strong enough. So either I had to buy another one of those lights or I can do something else. So I decided to play around with, to explore. I didn't even think it would necessarily be a viable option long-term, but I figured I'll give it a try. And I purchased the LED colored floodlights that you see on the left. They are freaking awesome.
And both of them work in conjunction with the Amazon device. So basically for the smart speaker that I have, I just say the custom command to basically turn everything on. And both of them go on simultaneously, even though they're from completely different manufacturers, they're plugged into different outlets, et cetera, and they work incredibly well. So those two things, those two products create the lighting effect that I have behind me. One of them is putting out the LED light strip is putting out a blue light and the floodlights that you see on the left are putting out a purple light. Did I even care about the color? No, I couldn't care less. It just had to be anything other than my skin tone. That's it. And it works incredibly well. Now let's talk about lighting yourself, the subject on the camera. So this is what I started off with. And I was really happy with the results that I was getting with this. I did a lot of research. Uh, on it. And what you see on the left, first I started just with what you see on the left. I did not get what you see on the right, which are the soft boxes. I only got the LED panels that you see on the left. And I thought, well, I don't need soft boxes. Like, I'm not a freaking photographer. I'm not doing like studio photography here. I don't really need that. I'll just tune down the lighting of the LED panels that you, that you see on the left. Anyway, so I purchased them and the lighting was really good. And then I realized that it actually was way more harsh than I wanted it to be. And I tried different kinds of angles and I had issues with the reflection in my eyeglasses, which are minimized right now. And one of the things, as I kept researching over and over, one of the common solutions that I came across was the recommendation of using soft boxes. So I caved in and I bought the soft boxes that you see on the right hand side. Now you might have picked up where a couple of minutes ago I said that's where I started off. I am not using, well caveat, I'm not really using those products right now. So basically I initially bought two sets of the LED lights that you see on the stands on the left hand side. The reason why I had two sets is because first I had two in front of me, one at this angle, one at that, one at that angle facing me. And when I use the green screen, I need to have dedicated lighting just on the green screen so that there are no shadows on the green screen because otherwise the green screen does not work effectively. So I essentially bought a second set of those lights that are pointed just at the green screen. Those are not even plugged in right now. I only plug them in and turn them on when I'm actually using the green screen. And all of them had soft boxes. Anyway, it's the two that were in front of me that I replaced. But it, it's not because I had issues or concerns or problems with the product itself. The issue that I had is when my granddaughter was born, basically, her crib went into this room. And okay, when it's time for her to go to bed, I wind down my work day. I work off of a laptop somewhere else in, in my home. And one of the things I realized is that because of the limited space in this room, anytime anyone went into the room to check on the baby, those tripods, the legs of those tripods, as you could see on the left-hand side, they were causing a fire and safety hazard right next to the crib. Basically, there was no room to walk around anywhere near the crib because I had both of these lights plus another tripod for the camera that I'm working on right now. And I also have a teleprompter. No, I'm not reading off of the script right now, but I am using a teleprompter right now. So that's another tripod. So basically I had three tripods all right next to the crib and I felt that it was absolutely not safe. So that's when I got rid of those LED lights that I'm showing you right now, which I still highly recommend. And I ended up having to pay more for not only other lights, uh, but more expensive lights, which I absolutely love. So these lights, I have two of them. So this is the Elgato key light. And this is basically a light that was made for gamers and live streamers. And this is not sitting on a tripod. As you can see from the image over here, this is simply clamped to my desk. So it is taking up zero floor space. So just imagine, I'm gonna go back one screen. So I had both of those tripods plus the other tripod that's for the camera in front of me 
taking up floor space. And now both of those tripods are totally gone. So this solved the safety and fire hazard issue that I was very concerned with. And this is a fantastic light, which by the way, I can also control wirelessly. So even if right now I wanted to turn them off, all I have to do is open uh, the Elgato app on my mobile phone. I can adjust the warmth of the light. I can adjust the brightness of the light. I can turn them on or off. I can do them independently. I can do them together. So this is very powerful. Now, one other thing that you really need to think about is if, like me, you are using glasses, there's something really important you need to consider as it relates to glare. So in order to minimize the glare, you need to make sure that the light is not directly in front of you. The light needs to be angled away from you, which might sound completely absurd, but that's what you need. So right now, let's go back for a moment to look at these lights. And the truth is I had the same kind of setup, the same angle, the same you know, concept that I'm explaining to you right now. I did the exact same thing with these lights too, where I simply had them angled towards the ceiling. So they're facing the ceiling right now. They're in front of me, but facing the ceiling. By having them facing the ceiling, in order for you to see the glare that I had before, I have to do this all the way like this, and then you could actually see the glare. But just by normal talking, even looking over to this monitor or that monitor, you're going to see minimal glare by having the lights facing upward. So that's one of the reasons why utilizing home fixtures, home lighting fixtures, can be a fantastic solution. If you don't wear eyeglasses, that is a totally perfect solution. And there is nothing wrong with that. And you are good to go. If you wear glasses, you need to figure out what you can do to adjust the angling, either the positioning of the lamp, the light fixture itself, or the angle of the bulb, essentially. So that's something really important to consider. All right. So that really wraps up all of the best practices and tips that I wanted to share with you as it relates to lighting and audio when working remote. And let's see if anyone has any questions. The Apollo, hang on one second, let's do this. Are there any lower priced microphones that may be on par with the microphone you use or something similar but lower priced? What I'll say is this, you can look around. I rely a lot on the reviews on Amazon, the feedback by others. And the Blue Yeti is considered, I really like the, the granddaddy of high quality microphones. If you can't afford it, don't try to convince yourself that you can. Simply go with the cheapest lapel mic and you're good to go. It's a very simple solution and it totally works. And especially when you have the long wire that it comes with, you're going to be fine. And also, if you can't afford this, but you already have any type of earbud, I'm afraid to even open the case because the audio might totally get thrown off. My computer will think, oh, I just want me to switch audio. If you're, you have any kind of earbud already, just go ahead and use that. Don't overspend. Don't spend more than you need to, more than you have to, more than you have. Stay within your budget. But I definitely want to call out. There are options available. This is what I use and this is what I totally love. Okay. I don't see anything else. So we're going to wrap this up. Thank you all for joining me. Have a wonderful evening. And by the way, anyone who's watching the recording, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop a note in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.